Here are five ways to get sharper photos. Hey guys, my name is John Sparman. I'm a wedding photographer in Birmingham in the UK. The first time coming across the channel, please stick around and subscribe. Today I want to talk about getting your images sharper in camera so you can spend less time culling through your pictures after a shoot or discarding photos which could have been amazing but just something just went off just uh, you know when taking the photo. This is primarily guided at kind of beginners to intermediate so if you are advanced you probably know all of these tips. Let's go in with number one and that is to increase your shutter speed. So if you don't know the shutter speed is one of three variables on the camera excluding flash because that's a, it's a whole different world at that point. Uh, three different things inside your camera you can change to affect how light or dark your image is. The others being the aperture and the ISO. The shutter speed controls how quickly the photo is taken by the sensor of the camera. So if you have uh, say a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second that means in a 30th of one second literally the camera opens the shutter takes a photo, records it to the sensor and closes it. This is also uh, something you can do in film photography as well. The higher the number you go, so say 125th of a second, 180th, 200, 500th, 2000th of a second, that uh, gap where it opens the shutter and exposes to the sensor gets shorter and shorter. The downside to doing that is your picture is going to get darker. If you imagine taking one photo at a thousandth of a second and another at two thousandth of a second, the one a two thousandth of a second is now twice as dark because half the amount of light has been let in. If you're confused about any of that, just look up the exposure triangle online. Plenty of people talking about it. By keeping your shutter speed relatively high, uh, you will be able to get crisp, sharp images. Now, depending on what you're photographing, that appropriate area of, of shutter speed can change. Uh, a good guide if you're shooting people is somewhere between uh, kind of a hundredth of a second and two fiftieth of a second. If you're new to photography and you've got a little bit of shaky hands, try near the two fiftieth of a second. You can also do uh, semi-auto modes like the shutter priority modes, which most cameras have nowadays. You can input your desired shutter speed there and it will control the other two variables, the aperture and ISO, accordingly to make sure your image isn't too dark. If you're shooting something like wildlife, you probably want something close to a thousandth of a second, maybe 500th of a second. And if you're shooting landscapes where things don't really move very much, you can drop really low down and you can pretty much disregard this first uh, point. Number two is going to be your way of holding the camera. What I like to do is hold the camera not like this, not like this. You want to get one hand firmly on the grip of the camera. So you've got one hand just here. You put another on the base of the lens. So you can see just like this. So now they're very close together, kind of a bit like a, a bit like a gun at this point and get your elbows and put them in against your chest. Something like this, so you can see this part of your arm is in against your rib cage. That way, you can tense up this part of your arm and you can take around, go around taking shots all day. This is quite nice and stable. The more points of stabilization you have, the steadier your uh, photos are gonna be because you are less inclined to shake the camera. It's worth noting the longer the length you shoot the lens, so this is an 85 millimeter, if you were shooting something like 100 mil, two, three, 400 mil, the more you're gonna have to work on your holding skills and to get that better, more accurate uh, shots. The third way you can stabilize your images is just upgrading your gear just a little bit. Uh, now, I am one person who says that gear doesn't equate a good photographer, however, however, some cameras give you a helping hand. There is something called IBIS, which is in-body image stabilization, as well as OIS or optical image stabilization. Now that is in a lens. Uh, now inside a camera like this is the A7 III from Sony. That sensor is stabilized. So it's going to reduce just a little bit of the shake you have when you're, you're taking photos, just like this. It will try and counteract it a little bit and slow down the jitters essentially and uh, give you a clearer shot. Optical image stabilization does very much the same, but that is built into lenses. So you don't have to have a camera with IBIS, but you can buy lenses separately, or we can stack them together like I have done here for the ultimate amount of smoothness. Now this is going to uh, enable a gyroscope, which is inside the lens. And it's kind of like a very small weight that, that shakes around just a little bit. 
and it works to counteract again those jitters. So you can buy equipment which can help you with it. Uh, it's generally reserved for the higher level cameras, so over a thousand pounds, two, three, four thousand pounds sometimes. IBIS and camera stabilization for lenses has been around for about 10, 15 years at least, as long as I've been doing my photography on digital cameras. So you can really find out something to suit yourself. If you want to get those real crisp shots and you're shooting something maybe like a landscapes where you're shooting a very low shutter speed, remember in number one I was talking about uh, having to use an appropriate shutter speed for what you're capturing and landscapes, you can use a low shutter speed like 1 15th, 1 10, 1 quarter of a second to get those waterfalls in uh, images looking silken and just uh, you can't see the individual droplets. That's a real nice thing to do really hard to do handheld. So what I would do at that point is get a tripod. I'm using a little tripod here, this is a travel tripod by the company Three Legged Thing. I also have a larger three meter video tripod from a company called Kea. Locking off your camera is what they call it, when you lock off your camera you fix it and it doesn't go anywhere. That can eliminate all uh, shake that you would get in your camera. And if you want to take some really undisturbed uh, landscape photos, you can actually set a timer on your camera of maybe two or five seconds, press the shutter button, walk away, so when it takes the photo, you're not interacting with it. Because even when it's on a, a tripod, if you press down here, your camera can just move just a little bit. You want to eliminate all of that, use an intervalometer, self-timer, and a big old tripod. Likewise, if you're shooting something really fast, like uh, sports photography, uh, you know, cars or, or something going really, really, really fast. You can use a monopod which sticks into the bottom of this camera and it will just alleviate the up and down movement here. So you can just really smoothly get left and right movements when a car is going past really fast, for instance. And the last tip, it is just down to experience, guys. Unfortunately, these kind of things take a long time to learn and to do it successfully, you will see throughout the years, I've been doing this for 12 years digitally and nearly 20 years on film, you will see throughout that time your uh, hit rate, so the amount of good photos you get, will slowly start to go up. Maybe, you know, if you're a wedding photographer like I am, I remember shooting some of my first uh, pictures on wedding at a thirtieth of a second because I had myself in one of those semi-auto modes and I wasn't paying attention to what shutter speed I was at. Those came out really blurry, you couldn't use them. Nowadays I comfortably sit at 125th of a second all day, I use my uh, motion where I have the camera real close to me with many points of um, connection. I will then use the in-body image stabilization and the lens stabilization together to further reduce stuff. Uh, then I will use a tripod if I need to, to get really panoramic shots or if I'm doing composites or things like that. It does come through time. Guys, I hope that's really gonna help you out on your creative journey. If you like photography and you like sticking around, I am a Sony wedding photographer. Please consider subscribing and I will see you in a future video.